to show you what's going on in the cactus and succulent garden. Today's going to be a hot one. We're approaching 85 and it's early yet. Uh, and it's supposed to go up to about 95. So everything got a really great watering last night. And I want to show you some of the changes. And all of the other cacti and succulents let you know how things are going. Over here I have repotted a couple of my plants into hanging baskets. The string of bananas was over potted in a really large pot and I think that um, having too much soil is not a good thing for a succulent. So I pared it down to something much much smaller and I made a couple of my macrame hangers. I call it macrame but there's no actual ornamentation on there, just some knots. But it's a very easy thing to do and I put my burrow's tail cac uh, succulent in that as well so hopefully they're going to like that setup. And over here I have a couple of ponytail palms doing really really well. Nice fat bulbs underneath. They're enjoying this summer weather. They're doing well. And up here I have restarted, just last night actually, I, I'm trying to restart my string of hearts. It was not doing well and um, I decided just to kind of tuck the little tubers in between sponges and see if I could restart it that way. I did have some luck restarting my Pilia pepper moides, not in sponges but in water and I'm hoping if I get a stronger root system it'll, it'll start performing for me. And here's a fire sticks euphorbia. Got lots of nice new growth on it. Looking terrific. And next to it is a pencil cactus. Also a euphorbia, but it doesn't get that red color. I think this will get the red color if it gets more sun. But with all the new growth, I've put it in the shade for a little while. Over here, I have a calanchoe. I also moved it into a more shadier spot. Thought it would do better over here. And I have a couple of my aloes, aloe vera gata, and a, a regular aloe vera in the back. They're happy over here. I have a wonderful rat's tail cactus, and that always does well for me. It's getting really, really long. That's a fun, easy plant. But let me show you up here. This is my favorite part where all of the all of the stems are growing. It just is very prolific and happy. And then down here, let me just scan over a few things that I brought over here. I thought my Echinopsis dominoes was looking a little pale and maybe it was getting too much sun. A lot of uh, plants I have repotted into terracotta for better drainage. So you'll notice that about this tour. And the Echinopsis dominoes back here is making buds. So I'm hoping that I have some separate a separate video to show you all on that if it uh, turns into a flower or flowers I should say. And then I have a, a Cereus forbici monstros called Ming Thing Cactus. Again it was getting a little pale so I put it in a partial shade area. I have some sponge propagation in the back for some uh, succulent leaves and these are the succulent leaves that were in there that had wonderful roots and I've planted them in a shallow dish with some soil just misting that kind of lightly and I have these which are very successful from leaves you know I propagated a lot and I ended up with about four or five but that's the way it goes at least with my my propagations and I have a couple of um, oops that's a, a red, I think red beads, Cedavaria. Um, oh, it's a little bit like the jelly bean plant, but it gets red. And a little jade propagation. I moved my, a couple of my cactus over here into the shade that were sort of getting pale. And one of those was my Echino Cactus Grusonii, the golden barrel. And I'm hoping it likes it better over here. And down here, Oh, I did that as well with my um, blue barrel cactus, my echino cactus, uh, my ferro cactus glossessens. And then on this shelf, I'll give you a little 
scan. I have all Haworthias and Aloes and Gasterias, and they don't like to be in blasting sun, summer sun all day. So they're over here in a partially shaded area. I believe this one is an Aloe Haworthia hybrid. Uh, and we have the aloes in the back. Uh, this one, I think, is one of my favorites. This aloe, it's just kind of fun, kind of tough looking. I have a little uh, container garden that my son gave me, and I've just popped some cacti pups in there. In the back, my sister gave me a collection of haworthias. That's looking, doing really well. And I have an aloe in the back and a very cool Haworthia over here. I love the growth pattern on this one. That's a really nice one. And I have a couple of jade plants down here. And behind it are my Mammillaria seeds um, shaded so that they can uh, hopefully propagate. And these were jade cuttings, so they're doing really well. And then let me take you up here and show you what's going on on this table. Uh, this table I've pretty much consolidated most of my jade plants and ponytail palms. Um, my pruning was a little brutal this spring, so my jade plants are, are looking quite cropped, but they're starting to come back a little bit, and I'm hoping they bush out again. Um, I'm going to rethink my pruning techniques. I just think it was a little too much that I took off. And over here, my Hummel Sunset Jade are totally green. I think I've been pampering them too much. I think succulents get uh, color when they're stressed out. And I don't really like to let my plants get stressed out. But I might let them dry out a little bit and see if they come back to that beautiful yellow color. Then I have some uh, more ponytail palm babies. And I have a, this is, um, I think, Golem Fingers Jade and a Silver Dollar Jade. And up along here, I have some succulents, various succulents. And this is a Mini Jade, Mini because of the size of the leaf. We have a Golem Jade here. That one um, I had consolidated back to three of them in one pot and it did get a little sunburned but it's but it's really doing much better and it loves the summertime it looked horrible over the winter but it loves this warm weather and here's a couple more succulents here and this might be an echeveria I'm really not sure but it's pretty I had to remove some of the leaves it got a little sunburned as well when I first brought it out and then over here I have a table of Apuntias. And these guys are really big. They're about three feet tall. They're beaver tail cacti. And this is the Apuntia that I restarted. It had rot, a rotting base and I cut that off and restarted it in the soil and it's taken off and it's sending out new pads. I'm happy about that. Over here, this is my produce section Apuntia pad, which I popped in some soil, and it's really fattening up and standing up on its own. That's taken root beautifully. And in the back there, I have a another Apuntia. It's a Gumby Apuntia, and it's looked terrible almost the whole time I have had it. It's kind of looking corky. Um, I do love the really thick pads that it has. It's kind of fun, but I don't know why it looks the way it does. Maybe that's normal, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then over here I have some little Apuntias. I'm going to change my position so you can see it. They're down here, and they are just kind of like the little bunny ears cactus and I have a white one and a golden one and a cinnamon one. I think the cinnamon one it's kind of brown and golden. That might be my favorite. Then I have a wavy leaf Apuntia here and I consolidated my Echinobivia rainbow bursts all into one pot. I think it looks really great and that is such a prolific 
prolific plant. I have propagated a lot of pups from that, but I think it looks terrific all together. Then let me take you around here. I'm just going to scan across the porch here, the deck I should say. Um, we'll take a look at some of the things on the table here. I have a succulent arrangement, half of which is doing really well. And I have this Crassula here. And I love that. I just got that this week actually. And I have a beautiful succulent and cacti arrangement here just from the local Safeway. I love how that looks. And I had just lost my moon cactus, so um, I couldn't resist picking that up. Plus, I really, really love this fuzzy little guy over here. And then I have a beautiful paddle plant, a Kalanchoe. And this is my ginormous um, golden barrel cactus. And so far, so good. I did put it in a terracotta pot so it will have nice drainage. I don't even know if I was able to get enough soil down in the bottom past all of those spines, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I am really excited about that one. It's probably my biggest um, round cactus. And then let me take you over here. I have some beautiful big San Pedro cactus. And they're doing really well. Trichoceros patchenoi. And I got those on eBay. And they have pretty much, even throughout the winter when they didn't get watered, uh, continued to grow so they might be four feet tall now I've only had them about a year and a half perhaps but they're doing fantastic and this is also um, I got an a uh, from a separate seller a trichoceros patchenoi log and it has become a mother plant to these four arms here um, I'll have to decide whether to cut those off and propagate them or just let it grow as it is. I kind of like how it's looking. And I'll go along here and show you what we have along the railing. This is my new bristle brush cactus grouping and it has a seed pod so that's pretty exciting. It came with it um, but I'm excited about that. I love mammalarias. And then over here we have an Oreoceros trollii. And this is a Stenoceros, I believe. You'll notice most of them have been repotted into terracotta, again, for good drainage. But this is a Stenoceros pruniosus, um, doing really well, getting tall. And over here, this is um, a, another really pretty color. It's a, uh, Pylocereus azurus. That's a beauty. And I have my Mammalaria elongata pups here. I did away with the original plant. It looked just horrible and wasn't doing well. And I thought the pups actually would do better on their own. So these are some that I rooted last year and these are some that I'm rooting now. They're all doing really well. We'll see how that comes along. Here's my Astrophytum ornatum. It's a hybrid G961, um, sometimes called the star cactus. And that's gorgeous. And I dropped it on its head the other day, and I'm happy to say it doesn't look damaged. Um, it just got knocked over by accident. But that's doing well, aside from the abuse. And then over here, I have a Pharaoh cactus lattice. Us, devil's tongue. So there you go. Um, that, that name makes a lot of sense with those angry spines. But that's a beautiful one and I love the dark green color on that. This one, um, one of my viewers told me and I forgot to look it up again. Some type of mammalaria with like these fish hook spines on it and I did prop it up with a stone. I think you know sometimes I learned this from somebody else on YouTube. Sometimes you don't need a stake you can just use a stone at the base of a plant and I think it helps keep it uh, more upright. It's got a lot of pups over here doing really well and then I have an Apuntia um, over here very fuzzy looking great. Um, I think it's called 
prickly pear snow. So that one looks really healthy. And then over here I have a fairy tale cactus. That's a Sarah's Tetragonus fairy castle cactus, excuse me. I think I said fairy tale. And then over here I have a golden ball cactus. And this one is just huge. It's really heavy too. It's a Trichocerus grandiflora, uh, commonly known as the torch cactus. So that's doing very well. And let me bring you over to the table. Over here I have some pups. Um, some of them got quite etiolated here. But these are my Echino Echinobivia rainbow burst pups. And then some little orange pups off of my painted cacti. And um, I removed the pups so that the plant could get more sun underneath the painted areas. And as you can see, it's really growing. There's a lot of green in it. All of the white spines up here are new, and the same thing is happening down here. I didn't think these cacti would make it. They were a gift, and I didn't think painting cactus was a good idea at all. And um, somehow they've managed to survive that. And they're living in this nice dish garden with the Mammillaria elegans, a pincushion cactus, and in the back we have a Puntia cylindrica, which is probably one of my most prickly, dangerous plants, and that really hurts when you get those in your fingers. And then over here, I've consolidated my lithops with my um, split rock, and I think it's a really interesting arrangement. This is a challenge for me because I love to water things, and these little guys can survive on passing mist in nature, or just zero rainfall areas. So they, they can survive just on the dew that comes through or the fogs that roll through. So um, I always keep tuck this under the overhang when there's any rain. I try not to water it at all. Did a little bit of watering earlier, but now that things are splitting open, you're never supposed to water them. So I'm very careful with that. And then over here, we have some Adenium obesum. Those are my my beautiful seedlings. One had been knocked over and fell behind a plant and I thought it was kidnapped by wildlife, but I did end up finding it. And I've since discovered it's a chipmunk that comes through here at 100 miles an hour and it's knocking over plants looking for like the grubs that are underneath the pots. So that mystery is solved and uh, the adenium has been returned to its pot. So I'm happy that that happened. That's a little update on the, the Odenium obesum kidnapping mystery. And then over here, I think it's called Apache Podium. My daughter and I just picked this one up recently. It's doing really well, and I don't know if it'll show up, but it has an, an iridescent trunk. It's just beautiful. And it's got some pups down there at the bottom. So that's, so far it looks like a nice, healthy, baby. We'll see how I do with that one. And then lastly, let me bring you over here. I have lots of different cacti over here. Oh, I haven't planted this yet. This is a hen and chicks. This is a forest frost and it's got sort of these this cobweb pattern going on. And then over here I have an old lady cactus, Mammillaria honey Anna. And I have an Echinophosulo cactus over here, and this little guy. And I love the, the way it has a wavy formation. It's, it's very sculptural. And then here's a Mammillaria rodantha. It did not bloom for me yet. I'm hoping it still will, but I don't think it liked the, the rainy cold spring we had. Uh, still looks healthy, but no blooms or seed pods. This one, I think, is a ferro cactus of some kind. This is my silver, my silver arrows cactus, and it has prolifically sent out all of these seed pods. So I already propagated, I think, about three seed pods, and I may collect the other seeds and decide what to do, you know, whether to propagate them or not. But um, that has just been a pro prolific 
production of seed pods. So it is really happy and it's beautiful. I love the, the way the spines are forming on that one. And then here's a little dish garden of some of my drugstore cacti. Well, two little dish gardens actually. And some of those are mammillarias. Um, this one I believe is a Parodia magnifis, magnificus, which uh, is also known as a notocactus. Uh, magnificus, so it has two names, but um, this is just a little cylind a Puntia cylindrical. But a couple of these, I just don't know exactly what they are, so they're not labeled yet. But they're everything seems happy. I did lose one of them. I actually lost my favorite one with, with red spines on it. It did not transition well. Um, I'm going to blame the drugstore on that one. I think it was dry for so long, and then I brought it home and watered it, and it wasn't happy. So here we come to my um, dragon fruit seedlings, and I got this. I didn't actually do a video on this. I should have, but this was a dragon fruit that I brought home from the grocery store, and I harvested seeds and dried them, and then once I planted them, here's what they look like a year later. So that's kind of fun. Fun thing to do. And I have a giant Apuntia violacea here. Um, it looks like it might be turning purple around the edges again. It, for me, I let this get too much water, so I think that's why it's not purple. Um, I think if it were drier, it probably would turn purple, but the new pad has kind of a neat coloration to it. Um, two new pads, actually. So that one's doing really well. And then I have a nice little echeveria here growing in a hedgehog planter that my son gave me and my sister gave me the Echeveria so I love that one it's growing tall and then let me take you over here I've got some seedlings down here these are so small that you can hardly see it they were upended and replanted I'm not sure how it's gonna go but these are now this is the second year these are Mammillaria elegans seeds that I um, propagated from my own cactus and under here, this one's looking horrible. This is a Stenoceros hollianus cristata. And it really suffered in the cold and wetness of this spring. It was really a horrible spring around here. But um, I'm putting it under cover. I think it's doing better with a little bit of shade. So it's on the second shelf here um, and gets partial sun. And I have this little guy back here. I love that one. That's a, also a drugstore cactus. And then I have some pups here and also some Astrophytum mix seedlings. So those are starting to look really like real Astrophytum. And down here, I just have some pups that I'm growing from my Echnobivia rainbow burst. These are two years old. These are one year old. Hi, friends. So this is really funny. I realized I forgot to scan over an entire shelf out here. So I did want to update you on that. We do have some very interesting things on this shelf. And that is my Notocactus ubelimanianus. That one is doing really well. And my Mammillaria fragilis pups are rooting in nicely. I have another Stenoceros prunius pot here with three, three different plants in it. And up front I have my new Echinoceros rigidus, rigid rubri spinus and I want to show you what's going on here I removed a flower from it and it kind of sucked in back in on itself here I'm going to focus in on that it's kind of interesting I'm trying to tell whether it's smaller than when I got it um, I'm really hoping that makes it because I, I incurred more damage than I was hoping for when I removed the uh, dumb straw flower that that was put on there and this one was from Lowe's but I love the coloration on here it's kind of a red pink and then over here I have my Trichoceros 
Brevi spinulosus. It's an Indian comb cactus, and it really has nice detail on there. And behind it, I have a notocactus linen hosei, golden ball cactus. And down here, you can see where the straw flower was removed. It's already grown quite a bit from last year. But this is what happens. The spines never grow back. So, you know, this is a practice that really damages the plants. But um, he's surviving just fine and actually really happy this summer even though he's scarred. And then over here, I have an old man cactus. I love the hairstyle. That's an Oreo Ceres again. And I have a small mammillaria here, another drugstore find, and a little dish garden here with some more drugstore finds. So I did pretty well at the drugstore this year. And this one, I did some plant surgery. I removed the moon cactus, which was rotting at the top of this dragon fruit. And it is now sending out a new part of a plant. I hope you can see that. Maybe I'll move it over here. But there you go. It's sending out on that side. And we'll see if it sends out uh, any more growth from... Because it wants to continue to grow. It will send it out from the um, aerials here. I think I said that right. Um, and this one was my plant surgery. So this is a little plant surgery update. Uh, this top, the top of this plant had gotten extremely etiolated and I did some surgery and I removed the top, treated it with cinnamon as an antifungal, and now it has put out what looks like four new pups at the top. So I'm excited to see how that goes and happy to tell you that surgery was successful. That's my Cam Camelobivia rose quartz. It's a hybrid. And then I have a Mammillaria haniana over here, an old lady cactus. And this one, unlike my other one, sent out lots of different seed pods. I thought they were going to be flowers, but it turns out they were, it was sending out seeds. So that is really exciting. And that is another little cactus from the drugstore and a small dish garden I have here as well. This is a pincushion cactus, Cylindrica puntia again. Obviously I have a lot of that and a Mammillaria elongata pup. And that's it. So this time I it really concludes my uh, June 2018 cacti tour. So uh, now I can say that I have covered everything. So again, thanks for tuning in guys and please subscribe.